there's a side valley that goes off right there. Just a crack in these huge mountains here. And we're gonna cross over through there today. We're heading to El Cocuy, a small pueblo in the mountains bordering a national park. That is absolutely insane that we were driving below that. Holy, that's like straight down. It's not even rock. <laughs> Woo, dangerous road, I bet. And now we're up on a cliff above that kind of stuff. <laughs> with, with more of it up above. Whoa, oh my gosh, babe. And over on the other side, we've got some hoodoos up top. Rocks forming a spire because they don't erode at the same rate as the dirt around them. That's crazy. So here in the center of town, they have a map of all the places you can go up here. We well, gotta get up in there. This is epic. Valley of the Frailejones. Uh, you can tell the tallest one there, Rita Cuba. And Rita Cuba Negro. We gotta get up there. Wow, this spot is already killing it, and now the guy says we can use a shower up here. Yeah. I love that hammock over there. Hola, <laughs> Hola. this view. <laughs> so this is the room here, <laughs> this spot. And yeah, we're letting us use the shower in here. These showers in a lot of these countries are funny because it's actually electrified up here. And sometimes if you touch it, it might shock you. <laughs> but that's how you get hot water, which is more than welcome and a nice clean shower. So we're gonna have a little special van brekkie this morning. You need to have some ripe bananas to do this and just follow the same recipe for pancakes as normal, but mash up some of these guys in here first to make the bad uh, banana pancakes. Normally I hate when bananas get all mushy like that, but it is perfect for banana pancakes and a great way to use these old bananas without having to throw them out. So just mash up the bananas like that until they're practically liquidy and then throw in the rest of the batter stuff. And we got these fresh blueberries from that first high altitude spot we were at with that really nice family. They grow these up there, so I think I'll throw these in. Have it. How'd they turn out? Mm. Top notch. Using the blueberries was a good idea. Oh, well, thanks. Glad you like it. <laughs> There's the town down there, El Cocuy. So 
so we're gonna take Sombrita for a walk this morning. So epic that the, the man here, Giraldo, he was showing us the fox. Yeah, he let us know about the fox. What a treat to see that tiny little fox. That's... So small. <laughs> he said it's a baby. So I guess it will get bigger. Yeah, and occasionally the, the family of it comes. Also this morning he said there was a huge deer. He showed us a picture. Some antlers, you know. So we're gonna take some Brita for a nice walk around his property. There's like a whole bunch of pine trees lining the walk, so it should be really pretty. So last night we had some agua panela with Geraldo. We've had agua panela a couple times. We've only paid for it once. <laughs> it's basically sugarcane concentrate in a brick mixed up into hot water. Yeah. But there's variations. The first one we had was hot water and panela. The second one we had was hot water, panela, and she put a little bit of lime in it. And that was really nice. The third one, Danny bought at a cafe and he had a shot glass full of lime on the side. So you can decide how much lime you want in it. Last night we had an agua panela and Danny tasted it and he's like wow this one is like the best agua panela we've had. What's in this? And all those said just a little bit of agua de diente. Which is liquor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's anise flavored liquor. I don't think there was much and then there was also no. um, canela. Cinnamon. Cinnamon. So that's called a canelazo. Canelazo. Yeah, yeah super good. That was really tasty. What a great morning here. Yeah. Beautiful weather. Oh my gosh. And being at that place is just really nice. He said, just pay what you want to pay. So I mm -hmm. said, about $5 a night again because that's what we pay everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I think we might actually pay a little more because. He let us use the shower. He gave us some canyon lasso. <laughs> yeah. He's just a really nice guy, too. Yeah, he's been super friendly. So we just drove into town with the owner of the hotel that we're staying on the side of. He's a really nice guy, so we're, we're glad we can do just this little favor for him. Now that we're in town, we're gonna grab some lunch and wander around a little bit. Both of us ate for less than five bucks. Hopefully we'll be able to figure out how to do the hikes with the national park and a guide for ourselves. We have to go on a little conference call, I guess, to talk to some people mm -hmm. about um, preservation of the area. Yeah, it's like the introduction, the introduction to the park for visitors. Mm -hmm. Kind of like in Denali National Park in Alaska, they're like, this is how you don't get eaten by a bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we just figured out a guide for two hikes. Yeah. And we figured out where we're going to stay up almost a week, yeah, like for the next five days, which is not very usual for us. <laughs> wow, this isn't quite the adventure. We're gonna be way high elevation. Yeah. We should be plenty acclimatized after being where we are now and yeah, last week. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm it's a funny process. You have to get insurance for the park. You have to pay a park entry fee that's good for four days and you have to get a guide. But our guide's just gonna meet us up there. So we're getting it all settled here where you have reception, where they have the office. I can't wait to see this Colombian snow and glaciers. Oh my gosh. That was actually a super unexpected nice day. Wandering around the town with our guy who runs the place up there. Uh, we just went and had a nice coffee, met his friend, and now he uh, we're gonna head out of town. He just brings a whole box of liquor, aguardiente. Wow, we just got back here. It's getting to be night, and look who's back. Carlota. Carlota. So we're heading out of our amazing spot today and moving to higher altitudes to the trailhead for our first mega hike. So some logistics for the Rita Cuba hike of El Cucuy National Park are find a guide. 
ours was just across the street from the national park and it cost us 150,000 pesos for the both of us. If we had more people, it would be cheaper. After getting the guide, we had to pay for our park pass, which was 75,000 each, and insurance, which came out to 7,500 each. For this hike, we paid 84 US dollars in total. The park pass is good for four days, so we'll be able to do another hike with it. It looks like we're stuck. This tire is pretty stuck. Yeah, so the reason why we got stuck is because this whole tree has fallen onto the road. So we had to go on a pretty bad spot. So now we're gonna pick up a bunch of these twigs and try and put it under that tire so that we can get some traction and get out of here. So here's the problem. <laughs> All right, Danny's gonna try and monster truck it again. With some speed this time. I don't know if it'll work a third time because of how big the rivet's getting. Really the ditch. So maybe we should just do max tracks. What do you think? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so to attempt some more traction, I put some branches in the part that we kind of, other cars and us kind of dug up. And then also we have our max tracks out in the area that we got stuck. Danny also trimmed tree that fell so that we can get closer to the tree. Hopefully that helps. Yeah! Sick! We made it! Looks like the Max Rex. Oh wow, he didn't even, he didn't even, he used one of the Max Rex but not the other. I was so worried it was gonna start sliding and we go down this hill right oh here, my you God. know? Yeah. I was like really second guessing if I even wanted to try it. There's another road out of here, fortunately, when we leave. Uh, yeah. Might just go the other way. Mm. Oh, you got some mud on your face. Yeah, one of the trees whacked me. It looks like I'm no longer wearing clean clothes despite picking up our clothes from the lavandery today. <laughs> Look at this place. The hike's right up that way. Got a pretty sweet mountain up ahead. And apparently there's hot showers and a bathroom right in there. People are staying in these cabins for a fair amount more than we are. We're paying five bucks a night. So yeah, this will be home for a couple nights probably. Well, for the extreme cold, we gotta take out the fridge and get out a comforter here. What'd you find in there, though? A cat. <laughs> and then also... Something useful? Three hair things. Oh, babe. Someone's been tossing these hair things. How did you do that? <laughs> or was it the cat? Or was it the husband? Oh, four hair things. Good morning. Good morning. So we're heading up on the Rita Cuba hike this morning. Right now it's 5.30. So yeah, we're gonna take some Rita on a nice walk around our area and then um, come back in here, set up her and Graham's little playground before we go. And then hopefully our guide will be here at six o'clock and we'll be able to start our walk. Should really be about walk. eight, ten hours and pretty good elevation gain. 
Wow, you can see the glacier up there for once. 6 a.m. and the sun is out. It's looking nice. Look at this. Ski gear, ski gear. Woo. Ski gear. We've gotten things out that haven't been used yeah. in a year and a half at this point, which is crazy. The comforter, my ski jacket, my ski pants. Well, here we go. So you can see here that we're gonna gain a lot more altitude. We're right here. <laughs> Woo. What do you think, Emily? Beautiful. <laughs> Love it. We're starting to get somewhere. It's pretty crazy. And there's a lot of different kinds of these farlejones. These ones are kind of charming. They have the moss on the side, but more markedly the flowers on top. Like little sunflowers coming out, really pretty. So earlier we thought we found the tallest fralejones, but here we definitely found the tallest fralejones. That one is like, that's gotta be like 20 feet tall. Whoa. Crazy. And up we go. Sun is making an appearance. And this hike is kicking my up, up, up. Low oxygen. Oh, compartimos. ¿Qué es eso? Eso es un postre. Ah. Gracias. God's hooking us up with some, some treats here. Mm. I'm feeling this altitude. What are we at, Emily? 13,470 feet. Dang, Colorado, they're always about bagging 14ers. We're about to get there. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Ooh, no biggie. It's hard to breathe, though. <laughs> you got it! You! I feel pretty good. It's only nine o'clock, almost. And we only have about two more kilometers left until the glacier, so I'm stoked. I feel like waking up this early has been like coffee for me. I'm like really excited. <laughs> I'm feeling the altitude pretty harsh. Yeah, it's more, it's a little bit less uh, uphill right now, so. I'm feeling this altitude, Emily. What, what are we at here? 
14,800 feet. Yes, we got our 14er. <laughs> we can go to Colorado. And you'll notice there's no more trees, barely any frailejones. This is way up here, super cold alpine environment. They call it the Super Paramo. Found our first little bit of snow. Wow, up there's our first glimpse of the glacier, Rita Cuba, Blanca. And according to our guide, that's the glacier, you know, but it used to be way down there, like every glacier. Wow, well, right there's the glacier. Emily, what are we at now? 15,430 feet. <laughs> what? <laughs> It's actually snowing a little bit. Pretty epic. Oh yeah, this hike has been more than we thought. But right up there at those signs is the end, the edge of the glacier. Woo, feels euphoric to be so close to the end. And then it'll be all downhill the rest of the way. <laughs> Man. Pretty epic coming up to a glacier in Colombia. So close to the equator. Have to come up here to 16,000 feet. The Vandersons. Come on. Come on, camioneta van. <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Muy amable. <laughs> and now I'm feeling really cold in the lungs, the altitude, the temperature. We're getting there though. The guide said, actually, we went a little trickier way. <laughs> Should be about at the level of the viewpoint, but we gotta cut down a cliff. <laughs> I feel pretty good. Yeah, it's getting a little bit harder to breathe. I can feel it in my head a little bit more. But I'm not cold at all. <laughs> I'm still pretty hot. <laughs> I think I wore too many clothes. Wow. This is a massive glacier. It's snowing again. Oh. So epic. I haven't felt this feeling in my lungs since I skied last. The snow and ice on these mountains is sacred to the surrounding indigenous communities, so no one is allowed to touch it. Probably the hardest hike I've ever done. That was really hard. <laughs> and now that we're up here, I am starting to feel cold, but it's a good cold because I was really hot the whole way up. Um, now that the clouds have been moving a little bit, we can see the town that we were staying in. We can definitely see all of the skiing lines that we would like to do, but we can't. Maybe next snowfall we see. <laughs> yeah, it's been an awesome hike. I'm glad we're at the top. We were always saying we're almost there, we're almost there. And now we're here. So six and a half miles is what my pedometer says. 15,680 feet. Yeah, if you can make it down here to Columbia, I really recommend this hike. Yeah. It's pretty epic coming up to a glacier, six degrees latitude. Almost at the equator. I never imagined when we started this trip there'd be glaciers. Or snow. <laughs> I thought we'd have to get all the way to Patagonia to see a glacier. But yeah. Here we are. <laughs> pretty epic. Yeah, Colombia's got it all. That's for sure. Muchas gracias to our guía, Luis Emilio. This guy can hike. <laughs> <laughs> so we're starting to get chilly. Time to head back to the van. Wow. 
Wow, so we're almost back to the van. And it was incredibly lucky that it didn't rain today. It's been raining all week. Can't wait to see how the animals are doing. Well, the van's not on fire. Let's see what's going on in there. Where's Graham? Graham. Oh. Is you okay, little buddy? Was your sister being insane? But she gotta get that energy out somehow. <laughs> I feel like she really wants us to watch her run around. So my pedometer says 11.95 miles. And it's only two o'clock. So we left some Vita and Graham alone for less time than most people leave their dogs for work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming with us. Yeah, that was an awesome time. Hike is definitely in my top 10. Let me know your favorite hike in the comments. Time for some R&R &R and we'll yeah. see you next time.